I believe the show started on CBS. He provided the half hour of talent, paid for the orchestra, paid for the facilities, almost like Fashions on Parade, that same kind of arrangement where he was doing it to publicize uh, the Arthur Murray Dance Studios, which were a national chain. So he came to you, came to the network, and said, I will do this show. My wife, Catherine Murray, will be the mistress of ceremonies, will provide the orchestra, all of the talent, uh, pay for the facilities rehearsal, and uh, that was it. There was no commercial for Arthur Murray Dance Studios. It was sort of tacitly understood that uh, because his name was out there as the Arthur Murray show, and he would say at the end of the show, he would, Arthur Murray would come on stage and the orchestra would be playing and he would take his wife and they would dance and finally dance off stage and that was the close of the show. But um, they were very nice people, both Arthur and Catherine, and I became great friends of, of both of them. So that was also an unusual situation. There was no ad agency or anything like that? No ad agency, nothing. Just Arthur Murray paying for the time and the program. What was he like as a person? Arthur? Yeah. Very taciturn. He uh, uh, was a man who built this empire of dance studios all on his own. He created it, and it was he became very wealthy as a result of it. And Catherine was a very warm lady. As a matter of fact, she used to bake cookies and send them over to my office for me. And I think the first time I ever had chocolate chip cookies, were they were baked by Catherine Murray. And uh, uh, he made so much money, he had a tremendous art collection. When he finally retired, they moved to Honolulu and they had a penthouse on top of a, an apartment building on Waikiki uh, that was all decorated in white furniture, white rugs, white walls, and the only color in the room, the rooms, were his art collection, which included some of the most fantastic, expensive art that was available. He had a Monet, he had Manet, he had a Rubens, uh, he had a Rembrandt, and these were all original art that he bought uh, during the Depression years from in the late 20s and early 30s, and he paid maybe $1,000 for a Monet, which today would be worth three or four million dollars. And I remember walking into it, the, the penthouse in Hawaii and seeing these beautiful paintings, and I said, Arthur, I never knew you were an art connoisseur. I said, what, how do you judge art? How do you judge what you're going to buy? And his line, which stayed with me all my life, he said, Ted, if the artist is dead, I'll buy it. 